understanding what their job requires. In a conflict with no front lines, facing an enemy hidden in plain sight, these Marines will live every day in harm's way. I've understood it from day one. Just gotta get good with God just in case if I gotta go meet him. Control measures, okay? Pay attention to what's happening outside. On a Marine base in Southern California, Alpha Company is preparing for war. In less than 20 days, these sons, brothers, husbands, and fathers will deploy to Iraq. Yes. We've got mosque. Right. Yeah, we, understand. we have people that are literally out of Iraq, Arabic speakers, people who know the culture, who know the little nuances of how people will behave over there. And so we go through these scenarios with them and we're able to learn how we are going to best react to that. You know what it is? Somebody already spotted it. Already been told These Marines are human, and part of the reason that we're going through the training is to expose those things that can bring out emotion, address it, tailor the training to help curtail that. In Iraq, insurgent fighters are using every tool in their arsenal to combat coalition forces. Five and twenty! From roadside ambushes to suicide bombings, Alpha Company 3rd Recon Battalion will face an unpredictable and ruthless enemy. And now we're fighting a, a different kind of war, low intensity, more of like a guerrilla type of war. They're playing dirty, and we have to adjust to that. The primary mission of recon marines is to gather intelligence on insurgent forces, including their location, their numbers, and their identities. Riza, so uh, what's going on? Even the smallest shred of evidence can provide clues to the intentions of an elusive enemy. You're basically the eyes and ears of the commander. You're reporting four to friendly lines. What you got to do is paint a picture. Hey, what's the enemy doing? What kind of mood are they in? Uh, what kind of equipment do they have? What kind of uniforms are they wearing? Recon Marines routinely operate in small, self-sufficient teams. Often they patrol deep into enemy battle space with no immediate support from aircraft or artillery. What we need from them is calm, cool, collective, so that when they're outside, they're just focusing on the job. These guys know their lineage in 3rd Reconnaissance Battalion. They understand it. Of course, uh, casualties are way on a, a commander's mind, but we're focused on the mission, and that's the way that I want the battalion to focus. Today, Alpha Company's training mission is to locate an American hostage being held in this simulated Iraqi village, populated with actors and filled with movie-style special effects. Uh, we're sent in to rescue a civil affairs personnel wearing old tricolored desert camis. Better be aware of your target. You don't just go raining bullets. Operating in a civilian setting is a unique challenge to men trained for war. If the Marines fail to use a measured, controlled force, innocent lives could be lost. Be aware of your target. Consider its background. Good to go. Typically, a Marine's role is to locate and destroy the enemy. But this battlefield's different and requires a different approach. These Marines understand the need to distinguish between insurgents and civilians. What we need to do is move. People love you, they hate you, they hide their hate, they hide their love. And you treat them like consistently. Then they'll see that you're genuine. That's when respect and rapport builds. And that's when they will truly start helping you do your job. Push him forward, push him forward. We may go into a village uh, basically looking for information. Hey, any type of signature that insurgents may be living around. Obviously, hey, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. And, you know, you got a friend there. You got another set of eyes and ears. We got a female in this room. The villagers tolerate the Marines' presence, but offer no information. Frustrated the platoon must maintain focus in the face of an increasingly volatile situation. There's so many things going on. 
so many variables, so much stimulus coming in, step in to get it done. And at times that can also be a problem. One of the tactics they're using now, uh, the insurgents are actually setting off an attack, drawing your attention towards the initial attack and then attacking you from behind. With tensions escalating, the team leader makes a quick decision. Push the mission forward rather than abort the search. With American lives potentially at stake, quitting is not an option. Support! When the Marines locate the civil affairs hostage, they discover she's a critically wounded soldier. Hey, we got a female that's missed a foot. Saving her life without becoming casualties themselves now depends on how they react to the situation. The devastating brutality of war can overwhelm even the strongest minds. Get on. All vehicles, punch up. On the south side. Let's go, 520, let's go. Yeah. You get sensory overloaded. You know, it is a New York City minute. It goes by in a snap. Contact, and next thing you know, it's over. Things happen so fast, your circle of awareness is like looking through a straw. Hey, where am I going? We gotta kill him. Let's get our vehicle number two and get out of here now. When you get into a situation where you really have to perform, you fall back on your training. And that's why we train the way we do. If you find yourself in a state of panic, you can fall back to that baseline of training that you have and you can perform the skills you need to. Move! Move! This vehicle is down! It has to go in that vehicle! Get in the vehicle! Yeah. Get in the vehicle! You okay? Move out! The Marines will extract the wounded hostage to a safe area for treatment, and their mission is successful. Good job. We got good airway breathing circulation. She's good for transport. <laughs> got you, girl. <laughs> but their work does not end when the actors relax. You need a ride? Oh, yeah. Quick debrief. Who, what way we're going to walk? It took them a little bit longer. Roger. The platoon will now receive feedback on their actions. With the RPG hit, so what you actually had to do is move out of the area. Instructors the observed perimeter. every move the Marines made and will analyze and grade their actions and responses to the situation. Extremity, uh, we put a tourniquet on that. We assessed the airway, breathing. After our original assessment, we moved her out to where we would transport. Uh, I would have started thinking about... What Alpha Company learns in repeated training scenarios like this one must prepare them for a world few can imagine. That was a good job there. Best thing you did, Doc, <coughs> is immediately grab the wound. I have to make sure that I do everything humanly possible and our staff does everything humanly possible to resource them, train them, equip them, set them up for success. We're not wasting any time, We're pushing them as hard as we can to get them as well trained as we can. These are good Marines and uh, I'm confident in them. The reconnaissance Marine must endure some of the most strenuous physical and mental training in the military. Train's coming, Roger. It's a long, tough process to get into a recon unit, but for those who make it, the reward is in becoming a member of the recon community. You have to go through some pretty tough schools to get here, and just like all the other, you know, special units throughout the DOD, there's some pride in just being with the unit. Marines are the most disciplined fighting force on this earth. And to be a part of the reconnaissance community and be a United States Marine, it makes me very proud that the stuff that our community can do. For many of these men, Iraq will be their first experience in combat. The eagerness to put their training to use doesn't come without some anxiety. I guess we're all a little anxious because we've been building up, you know, for how many months. And come here and you do all this training right before you go, so you're all like, oh. uh, Probably just like the rest of the guys, excited. I mean, we've been training for years now to do it, but just haven't got our shot. You know, I'm sure once we'll get there, it'll kind of fizz out, and you can really just focus in on what we're set out to do. Experienced leadership is the linchpin to Alpha Company's success in battle. Some of these guys, they're, they're fresh out of high school, you know, and then you'll see them looking up and asking, you know, some of the older guys questions so they get the knowledge. Jake, Frank. Let's come on down. Link up with us. After nearly 20 years as a Marine, platoon gunnery sergeant Coronado has an eye for detail that misses nothing. 
Well, basically, I'm in charge of beans, bullets, and band-aids. It's just taking care of the guys. Something that ranks real high up there is definitely the training. You had big guns on there, okay? All you did was just bundle down your ass. Coronado's really squared away. He's an old cat. He's been alive a long time. You know, he's like 40 years old. But the thing is, he's very organized, very flexible. He can stick to a plan. If it changes, no problem. He'll adapt to and overcome. With deployment to a war zone less than three weeks away, the tempo of training increases daily. Alpha Company repeats mission scenarios over and over. The goal is to develop a so-called fluid state of movement, reacting to every situation as it arises, adapting to any circumstance without becoming predictable. Let's go, rear element, push it up. It's always chaos on the battlefield. As far as training goes, there's always chaos as well. And the best way to get better at it is just practice. Go, man. <laughs> Dry runs, doing it over and over and over again. Nobody likes doing it. It's a means to an end. It's a means to staying alive. As much as they hate doing it, they realize it. And you know, that's why I love recon marines, because they bitch and moan about everything, but they still do it. Alpha Company's next training scenario is designed to prepare the men for the deadliest weapon used by the enemy. They must learn to react on instinct before the countdown to deployment is over. Let's go, 520, let's go! The men of the 3rd Reconnaissance Battalion are in their final phase of training, just before being deployed to the war zone. In just over two weeks, they'll be patrolling the roads of the Sunni Triangle. Training is only one part of Alpha Company's effectiveness as a unit. A haircut here, you know, that's, that's a little thing we do. As with all Marines, their true strength lies in their loyalty to each other. Regardless, that's what I'm taking about an inch off the top right here. It's all about the brotherhood. You know, we might not be Whatever blood brothers and share the same mother and father, but we're brother in arms. Some of these guys, I'm closer to them than I am with my own brother. Especially within the company, it's very much a family. Very much a family. Everybody's kind of feeling each other out. We've worked together, but it's a bit different when you have to eat, sleep, and you're around each other 24-7. But like any family, there's always dysfunctions. I listen to reggae, R&B, slow jams, hip-hop, dance, everything besides country. I like country and I like rock. I don't like rap. That's, I don't think very many people do in the night. You'll never find a different bunch of personalities than I think you will, you know, just in the military in general. Yeah, I got a boxer's fracture. Tell all the chicks at the bar I got shot in Malaysia last deployment. Someday they'll see me star Major Milbrand up there, strutting around under my own battalion. Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> You have people coming from every background, from the big cities to the little country towns. So it's it's a very diverse, very uh, very personality-driven group. Hey, we got a pile of rocks. Uh, looks like an indicator. Uh, but... The most menacing threat faced by any coalition force is the improvised explosive device, or IED. About 70 percent of American casualties in Iraq are caused by IEDs, undetectable until it explodes. The IED weighs heavily on every Marine's mind. The only thing that really does worry me a little bit is uh, the IED threat over there, because that's something I can't control. IEDs are way out of control. Special effects crews have concealed IEDs along the narrow street inside this training village. An IED can be hidden almost anywhere. Using special effects is a new addition to a training scenario, striving to keep it real and test the reactions of men working to stay alive. The Marines are getting exposed and are getting an idea of just exactly what it is that they're going to be running into. They're fake IEDs. They make a big sound and it's more realistic because we have no control over where it's at. A lot of times it surprises these guys and you know, they get in that mindset and sometimes you see them jump. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. As each platoon sweeps through the village, they strain to sense the avenues of potential enemy fire. An IED blast may be only the first stage of a larger insurgent attack. You have an IED on the right, but then you'd be ambushed on the left. That was the reinforcement until you've got to hold your sector of fire. You've got to trust that the guys that are watching your back are actually watching your back, and you got to just sit there and do your job. Move them out of the front! Move them out of the front! 
uh, may have to breach with a grenade. Throughout training, the men are provided vivid evidence of the dangers they will face every day in Iraq. But outside of the physical danger, there's an emotional toll to pay for such a dangerous occupation. There's always the wrestling match in your brain between the wanting to say goodbye and to family and friends, but also trying to you know, put on your game face and uh, ratchet down the emotions. I've been deployed a lot since we've been married. She always tells me, be careful, take care of myself, you know, the normal stuff. She knows I got to do what I got to do, so she knows I don't like her to dwell on it. Moms always tell you, you know, they love you. You know, mine does. She worries a lot. She's a typical mother hen. I don't know. She, she kind of just accepts it. You know, no matter whether I'm 12 or 30, you know, she's going to worry about what I do. The IED is a 24-hour threat, especially deadly in vehicles driven by suicide bombers. Tonight, the men of the 3rd Platoon will face another challenge as training continues to escalate. Making them think, throwing new problems at them, and seeing how they manage to stay calm, cool, and collective during the situation. When a civilian car approaches the checkpoint, it appears to fit the profile of a vehicle-borne IED. The Marines have seconds to react. Light him up! The vehicle that was trying to run through actually wasn't adhering to uh, what they were yelling at them, the signals they were throwing out for them to stop. But the standard operation procedure is for them to engage the vehicle if they see it's not going to stop. Um, basically, that was, uh, they're trying to kill us, we got to kill them. Despite the explosion, the Marines suffered no casualties and safely secured the area. Two weeks from deployment, the men of the 3rd Recon began live fire training. Shooting real bullets instead of blanks is as close as they can get to the physical and mental stress of an actual firefight. They're using live ammunition. The Marine now, he has his weapon system and it's locked and loaded. And it's no longer running around like your parents' backyard playing guns. Now it's for real and people can get hurt. We've received intel. Lieutenant Whitney's brief before the exercise begins is for safety. Shooting live rounds while performing complex physical maneuvers raises the danger. Each man must remember that even a momentary lapse of attention can be fatal for him or his teammates. We're moving out! The squad assault teaches the Marines to maximize firepower. With one team pinning the enemy down, the other moves forward alternating fire and movement as they advance on the enemy. This movement is called bounding. I'm looking left and right. Hey, you know, where's my actual element at? I've got to keep up with my element. I've got to listen to my team leader. Uh, I've got to direct my fire where he wants that fire to be directed to. Contact front! A successful squad assault relies on fluid motion, sustained fire, and team coordination. Let's go! Bound! 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 Uh, right. Moving, shooting, and communicating requires a combination of teamwork and awareness of each man's position. Cover each other! Teamwork! You typically want to have somebody shooting to cover the enemy, keep their heads down to keep them from shooting you. And by fire and maneuver, you can close the distance on the enemy and you can get to the side of them. You're able to uh, either kill them or make them surrender. Move, move. If you're not seeing what your teammates are doing, it can be dangerous. Not knowing where your sector of fire is, especially when you're on foot. Not all dangers Alpha Company faces are bullets and bombs. In Iraq, summer temperatures reach 120 degrees Fahrenheit or more. Alpha bomb! Focusing on the mission while carrying up to 80 pounds of ammunition, water, weapons, and armor plates in the intense heat is a constant challenge. It's one thing being in vehicles, but when you're on foot and you're doing an assault course like that, you have to be aware of everything that's going on around you. An important lesson of combat is to expect the unexpected. Six, this is two, we got a dry hole here. When the men arrive at the reported location of a weapons cache, they come under attack from an enemy ambush. Morris, give me rear security! Push left, goes push left! We try to replicate as close as we can to actual combat situations. When the Marines do hear the actual real crack of that round, it does give them a, a little bit more of a sense of urgency. The adrenaline picks up. There's uh, some inherent stress there. Alpha Company's primary weapon is the M4 carbine. 
With a muzzle velocity of 2,900 feet per second, a burst from an M4 can tear through a target five feet away. To prevent death or injury from friendly fire, all platoon leaders keep a close eye on their team's movement. It's a live fire situation. Obviously, you don't want anybody hurt. Another thing, too, is to paint a mental picture for the troops so that they know, hey, this is where I have to go. I have to pick my next cover and concealed spot so that I can direct my fire onto the enemy and suppress it. I also have to keep from getting shot. Coronado's platoon takes quick action to deflect the simulated insurgent attack. Shooters, turn and go! The platoon reacts in a single seamless action, exactly what he wants to see. As the enemy is forced to take cover, 3rd platoon completes a safe withdrawal. Everybody's laying down fire trying to suppress the enemy. If everybody's doing their job well enough, you know, that's what's going to happen. You, know, you want to conserve ammunition, you only do so much. You gotta make sure that, hey, nobody's firing behind anybody, making sure he's staying in his lane. Cease fire! Cease fire! If it was an actual enemy attack as well, uh, I've got to be thinking, hey, do I have 360 security all the way around? Make sure I got guns every which way. We've got to make sure that we cover our backs and hopefully come out on top, accomplish the mission. Mounted patrols are among the most dangerous missions for recon marines. Convoys cover more territory than patrolling by foot, but the vehicles are easy targets for IEDs. Every man in the convoy is aware of his vulnerability, but trust in their tactics and each other is the biggest advantage they have. When you're going into a combat zone, you want someone with common sense who can manage you and lead you. I'd rather be a deer led by a lion than a lion led by a deer. I don't want someone who's going to crumble under the pressure. I don't want someone who's going to say, well, you know, whatever you think, just go with it. I want someone who's involved. As the final days dwindle down to a precious few, nothing can prepare the men of 3rd Recon for what happens next. The men of the 3rd Marine Reconnaissance Battalion are in the final days of training before being deployed to Iraq. Every day, the tempo increases and the tension is growing. In less than 10 days, it's for real. Today, a mounted patrol must traverse through enemy territory to reach its objective, an Iraqi village. The constant threat of insurgent attacks provides a stark reminder of the vulnerability of travel by road. For platoon sergeant Rosignol, realism in training is everything. As the man responsible for his men's safety, he feels personal responsibility to bring every man home. My ultimate goal is just to train everybody to the best of my ability, give them the right tools to put in their toolbox so I can get all of them home. And nobody wants to be the one to write that letter or go make that home visit. Rosalind, what he brings to the table with him and his platoon commander and their relationship is that they're give and take. They come with their plan and they also, they can flex. He doesn't like to have any friction when it comes to, look, what do we have to do? Let's get it done. And that's his type of personality. Bringing the men home in one piece is a constant concern. Every decision made by 1st Platoon Commander, Lieutenant Whitney, can mean the difference between life and death. You'll find out that you learn more in rehearsals and actually doing it, putting the Marines in the dirt, running through the scenarios, than you ever do you know, reading a book or sitting in a room and talking about your, your game plan. Hey, Bobby! To mentor that officer. Your ego has to be left at the door because that man, he's looking to you to give him guidance in that subject that you're the expert on. They'll fail together or they'll succeed together. That's how it goes. That's how it is. I mean, it's too big for that slot. It's not cranking down. The essence of this training lies in its unpredictability. Think about contingencies. You know, if this happens, what are we going to do? If we get ambushed over here, what are we going to do? As a platoon commander, that's your job to think about the next piece and then make sure we have a good plan. Good. One. Red five, red six. Red As first platoon rolls out to the desert, their light armored vehicles provide mobility on flat open terrain, but also make the platoon higher profile targets. Orientate left. As you're with these guys, you get to know their every move. If you just shove them all together and put them in place, then 
you really can't anticipate what that guy's going to do, and that's where mistakes are going to happen. If someone who's in an admin job makes a mistake, someone doesn't get paid. If I make a mistake, someone gets killed. Load it up! Load it up! That's also why I surround myself with very competent, very capable individuals that will say, hey, sir, you know, you need to move here, or hey, sir, they're about to do this. Everybody keeps their head in the game. Oftentimes, convoys will come under attack by insurgents hiding among the civilians and villages. In this scenario, the green targets represent civilians. The Marines must learn how to differentiate between friend and foe. Red one, pick up your rate of speed. The mission is to protect the innocent, understanding the atmospherics of a, a particular town and how it may change from town to town. What the f are you engaging up there? The extraction is not without problems. Every mistake will have its own consequences. We already try to think like the enemy. We also need to think like those friendlies, the innocents out there. Put yourself in their shoes and try to understand what's going through their mind. Hey, bravo, bravo! It's an axiom that no plan survives the first shot of a battle. Whitney encounters a double predicament when one of his heavy guns jams. Then he loses radio contact with his other patrol elements. If you really want to try and push them to their potential, you have to push them to failure. Because only after failure do they truly understand that's where their bar is at right now. And if they want to elevate it, it points out your weaknesses and it also points out your strengths. JD! Clear communications are a key to successful unit action. Without them, the best trained men can deteriorate into confusion. When Whitney's radios go down, he is forced to improvise. Bobby! It's not exactly what you typically do by doctrine, but it's something, you, again, you have to adjust to. You can't be paralyzed by the fear of what ifs. You have to really just move through it. You guys pull around us! How do you keep your elements together? You have your voice, you have hand and arm signals, and if nothing works, you're going to have to physically go over there and tell them what you need to do, or show them. You start doing it yourself, and hopefully, then they'll go with you. Hey, mount up! There's no pet solution to any situation. You look at the issue and uh, you determine what, where the problem lies. I always am for positive reinforcement and uh, positive leadership and, and getting the Marines to figure out their own solutions to problems because otherwise they're not going to learn. Red 5, Red 6, we got a barrier to our front. We can't reach it. An abandoned vehicle is rigged with an IED. Its detonation showers the troop carrier with shrapnel and sends the platoon scrambling for cover. First platoon recovers from the initial attack, but they must process several different events. Red 6, Red 5, that smoke is one of our trucks on fire. Chaos starts. Everybody keeps their, keeps their cool, keeps their uh, train of thought going, and um, just training takes over. You know, they've done it enough. You get about five or six things thrown at you at the same time. You can't single-handedly do it yourself. You've got to delegate responsibility down to your subordinates, and that point really gets driven home at the convoy course. A lot of these scenarios are going to throw at you, are designed to push you to the edge. They're going to put a monkey wrench in the plans, so you have to adapt to that. You have to work under stress. We've totally disintegrated at this point. What's the plan? Well, the plan is to... With helicopter evacuation for his wounded on the way, Lieutenant Whitney and his men stabilize the casualties and set security. Watch it, watch it, watch it! There's a big smoke grenade all over and you're trying to, you know, haul a 200-pound man through it up a sand hill and you're not breathing too well. I mean, it's, it's obviously not optimal for exercise. Hang in there, Doc. You'll be all right, man. Right. Any time in the scenario that we take casualties, and we usually always work that in, uh, we've trained our guys extensively in combat trauma. All of them are very capable first responders. Hey, Mills, what's his status? He's alert. These guys have been through a uh, tactical, uh, combat casualty care package that we put on for them so that they can treat patients while I'm running around making sure that treatment's getting done. Send it. One, two, three. Leading the medical effort is Stephen Way, one of the Navy corpsmen assigned to Alpha Company 1st Platoon. The Marine Corps doesn't have any uh, medical personnel, so they pull from the Navy. 
Uh, what we do is we go through the same type of training they do. I feel more comfortable with a weapon because I can suppress the enemy, get rid of him, and that way he's not going to cause me no harm, and I can actually go back and then treat the patient. Okay. Hey. For Lieutenant Whitney, this has been a learning experience. There are no timeouts in war. 20 meters up ahead, security 12. Yeah, I guess I was running around quite a bit. Run up to truck number one. Well, you don't want to get too Run tied down into the task at hand because then you lose sight of the bigger picture. So you just have to balance, you know, keep track of what's going on, the big picture. Okay. Hey, four total. Three urgent surgical, one urgent. As the scenario plays out, the prospect of real casualties is hard to overlook. Hey, right here! Let's go! You have to think about that, and you also have to think about people that you're close to, possibly being hurt or killed. I hope that I never have to see any of my guys go down, but I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to do what I need to do to help them the best I can, so if that happens. He's, he's starting to crash! My main goal is to bring everybody back safe. That's uh, my biggest worry. You know, I don't want to be out there and you know have one of the guys go down. You know that's that's that'd be that'd be hard to take. I think. The key to Alpha Company's mission success is the ability to transfer their experience into takeaway knowledge, okay. learning from their mistakes. Back, back, peace. Okay. After each training operation. Every move is carefully analyzed. You realize you really need to focus on those weak parts. Yeah, the convoy course really drew out a lot of uh, weaknesses and some gaps that we had. Tom kind of hurt us out there today, didn't he? Yeah, it hurts real bad. Okay. As far as those debriefs go, the initial debriefs were rough. But you want to kind of punch them in the nose a little bit to get their minds rolling so they do spend the extra time, try to improve themselves. If you've got two guys on one side of the vehicle, one guy... It's tough. I mean, these guys don't have a lot of experience with those weapons. Um, none of them are, you know, machine gunners by trade. So that's something that we're going to have to spend time on. Um, and we, again, we haven't had a whole lot of time to do it. And uh, where's the, the counter of That's why the training is very difficult for them, because they are not used to failure. But it motivates them to put in that extra time, long nights, or even all the way through the night. And Mr. International wants to come see you. You were shooting some of the friendlies. The fear of failure is in there. It's in everybody. No person worth his salt can go through the day without thinking about the fear of failing. The new insurgent battlefield is the urban environment where the enemy can blend in among civilians. And one of the truest tests is how you stand up in combat. But nobody really knows until you got somebody that's actually trying to take your life. To prepare for the urban battlefield, Alpha will enter a small village setting, a mock city designed to expose platoons to possible threats. Ultimately, mission success will be determined by who lives and who dies. Rebel battery, this is FO4. Modern urban combat isn't simply reducing entire villages and cities to dust. Often, with innocent civilians at risk, indiscriminate destruction can create a deeper resistance from the very people that Alpha Company and other coalition forces are trying to protect. You're there to stabilize their country so that they can take over and they can live free. But it takes a while to get there. Warrior 2 1. I could care less we get one firefight as long as the people get a better life. And we push suppression back here. Between what we're learning here and the information that we're getting from inside Iraq, there are no fix alls. There is no one answer to the problems. It's a grab bag, and the more tools we have in the grab bag, the more versatility we're going to have. It just goes straight down. Eat it. They're down. Martial arts training provides recon platoons another option for detaining suspect insurgents from the civilian population. You want to be compliant? Americans are very careful. They're very careful of women, very careful of children, very careful of old people. So what we're giving them is tools to solve problems that are commensurate with the environment they're in and the job that they're doing at that point in time. As they practice the lessons of physical restraint, each Marine learns how to exert the least amount of pain while leveraging the optimum measure of control on the adversary. When 
things are loud, people are screaming and yelling. It gives them tools to survive and accomplish the mission in the most efficient way. I'm putting you on the spot. I just want you to experience a big, big, tough man. I have a couple small guys in my platoon. The guys are a little bit timid. So I had them take down the largest guys that we have in the platoon. It's to instill confidence in them. Hey, ooh, the shit. It's ball busting, but it's on a professional level. The rules of restraint will be tested as Alpha Company enters another simulated Iraqi village where the enemy can hide himself among innocent civilians. Here, everyone must be considered a potential threat. Marines must prepare themselves to fire only when directly threatened. You move in, you run into a baby. Today's mission involves one platoon searching for a captured American contractor, while another platoon simultaneously raids an alleged insurgent safe house. Each man has a specific job. I finish the room, EPW team up, you come in. They can develop really good plans, very in-depth, and they can get it down to the belt buckle level to where the Marines understand what their roles are, what they have to do, and that's what makes them successful. And everyone's going over in their mind their, their role within the mission, what their specific job or tasks can be, and just troubleshoot it, what can go wrong. Hey, dudes! Somebody gets taken down, you need to know the other guy's job, so it's just making sure everybody knows everybody's position and how it works. Platoon leader Lieutenant Whitney heads the rescue unit, made up of two teams, commanded by Staff Sergeant Bobby and Staff Sergeant Rosignol. Side of the shoot house. Got it. Momentum is everything. If you're going and the momentum stops, then we no longer have the advantage. We're a small platoon. We're a small unit. All right, y'all go back. The biggest thing we have going for us is speed and violence of action. As the platoon nears the rescue area, it comes under attack by a rocket-propelled grenade, or RPG. The Marines react instinctively with their fluid movement response and maintain the offensive. And then we started getting attacked with RPGs, and then right away the team's got to find, hey, you know, we need to get inside that building. We are going to the courtyard. Okay, got it? Somebody's shooting at you or putting a kink in your plan to, to move from point A to point B messes things up but you have pre-rehearsed solutions to that and usually those aren't you know one size fits all just move from safe place to safe place and then once you're there pause even if it's only for a few seconds figure out where do i need to go next these platoon maneuvers from house to house to maximize the use of cover and concealment that's what it's all about you're really in the sh and that's how it's, what's going to happen that you're shooting at people and you have to kind of deal with that you know mentally Whitney becomes separated from the other units. Realizing his mistake, he keeps his men moving, eliminating the sniper across the street and pushing his team forward to rejoin the rest of the platoon. I was trying to move Bobby's team too quickly. I wanted him to move quickly so I could link up with the rest of the platoon. And I should have put myself in the middle of his team and I'm just telling him, hey, this is where I need to go and let him drive. Hey, Bobby, what's going on? The team becomes pinned down by sniper fire. But they must identify the source of the shooting before they can shoot back. Guys are reacting and sometimes they just gotta make those moment decisions and act out on them to keep themselves and their fellow Marines safe. So it's it's confusing. Whitney spots the sniper's position and passes it to Bobby's team. We have guys that are a lot more comfortable with themselves as an individual. But once we get those teams built, you know, they're they're amazing in what they can accomplish. I'd be the last guy in here to say that I always have the right solution, but sometimes a poor plan executed well is better than a great plan you know, executed poorly. There's no real right or wrong decision. It's how you do something rather than freeze and do nothing, and that's what kind of separates them from the other guys. While searching for the American contractor, the team encounters injured civilians and angry crowds gathering outside the building. The Marines must be careful not to lose control of the situation. It's kind of that, you know, analogy of have somebody spit in your face, but still look at them with a smile. Finger close to your trigger, but always on the outside, you're calm, cool, and collected. You're not feeling anything. On the inside, yeah, you're wrestling with the emotions of 
you want to respond, you want to do something back. I need you to pick us up at rally point three, how copy? The platoon was kind of spread into two parts and Roz had two teams in the house and then I was outside across the street with Bobby and his team and then he had further intel for where the contractor was that we were supposed to recover. The second team has located the American contractor. Everybody got it? But the mission is not over. The other platoons preparing to hit the insurgent safe house. He's a wanted terrorist, so we gotta get to the back room to get him. Down back. Time is now critical. The element of surprise is gone. Nobody can predict what will happen next. We're gonna take him Any down. chance to disrupt the insurgent network must be measured against the possible loss of Marine lives. The Marines are behind schedule. Overwhelming force will be their tactic to create offensive momentum. They engage anybody with the weapon, the barrel comes up on anybody, they're dead. Okay. In the end, what it boils down to is risk versus gain. Try to minimize the, the risk that's involved, but it's all for what do you get at the end. If you're going to take Marines into a fight and there's a chance that you're going to lose Marines, well, is that fight worth the loss of life? And as leaders, you have to make those decisions all the time. The goal is to capture an insurgent leader. But the platoon must move with some caution. Their first priority is to subdue all suspected insurgents within the target perimeter. Two unknowns. Let's go, let's go. Get in there. Since every corner of the darkened house can hold an assailant, the platoon moves to create a 360 degree security bubble as they advance through the building. We've learned over the past couple days is inside the house, moving as a team from strong point to strong point, from room to room. So you're always moving from a safe place and then you're going to make the next place safe by clearing it. Mark your area. To prevent confusion, rooms that are cleared are marked with glow sticks. Mark, mark that room. Hey, stop moving. When the insurgent leader is captured and identified, Marines search every room, looking for evidence, intelligence, anything that could lead them to other enemy strongholds. With the villagers well aware of the Marines' presence, extraction could become an issue. It may be training, but the Marines are tense. It's tough to listen to three different things at once, so a couple times I had to, you know, tell the guy on the radio to shut up or hold on a second or tell the guy who was talking to me. At least, yeah, in my brain, I can't listen to too many things at once. Hey, I need security up out over these walls. Ready? Call and let them know we're coming out. As tensions build among the crowd, Marines concentrate on keeping their security perimeter intact. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. When the word is given, the platoon withdraws with their prisoner while keeping angry civilians at bay. Put them down there! Put them down there! One person, hold security up. We know what kind of doors, what kind of windows, you know, how many rooms, how many levels. But well, we're not going to have that advantage anymore. You know, we train as close to real as we can, but there is nothing in training that can mimic somebody who's actually out there trying to take your life. Soon, 3rd Recon will face the combat conditions in Iraq. However, the training is achieving its purpose by teaching tactics and giving the men confidence. What motivates a race car driver? He doesn't go out there to drive around the track. He goes out there to win. It's the same thing with being in the military. The professionals, they're locked on. These guys are taking advantage of all the free time to increase their knowledge of where we're going, what we're doing. So they're maturing much faster than normal. As the day of deployment approaches, each man in Alpha Company faces his own thoughts about what's to come. Oh, come on, man. It's not so much a competition. It's being alive. That's what it is, man. It's being alive. It's living your life to the fullest, living the best life you can, as straight as you can. My last combat tour in Iraq ended three months ago. You know, so yes, I am excited to go back. It hasn't really, I guess, totally sunk in. Well, I wish we had more time. These past few days at the shooting house has been by far the most valuable training that we've had. Four days left till we leave. We have two more days of training and uh, two days off. I just want the boys to relax, get as much fun in as they can in two days, and 
you know, start getting their mind ready for the next eight months. One-way flight. One-way flight, buddy. Jet Blue, 89.99. Daddy's got to go do his job, and when I come back, we'll go on vacation. Sit at the beach and boogie board and do all the other stuff that we do. So. My family's behind me. And of course, every mother's worried to death about her son. What? Go ahead. You know, but I wouldn't want to go to war with anybody else than the guys I'm doing with. Well, the family uh, has been nothing but supportive. All right, guys, we're rolling. We're all human, and so you need people that you can confide the truth in, and that'll support you no matter whether I'm doing the best job or whether, you know, I've had my darkest day.